Hey everyone, I'm Jazzflies and welcome to another DCS World video. I've had my HP Reverb G2 VR headset for a couple of months and wanted to share my experience in DCS. If you've been window shopping for a new VR headset to supplement your flight simulation experience, perhaps this video will answer some of your questions and or concerns. To start off, here are my current in-game DCS World settings. and Steam VR settings that blend a great balance of visual quality and frame rate performance. Here's the quick rundown on my PC hardware specs. And a link to my full setup is in the video description below. For those looking at VR for the first time, you will notice some shaking in this video and it may appear as degraded frame rate performance. That is simply the recording software capturing the micro head movements that we all make. This would be a misrepresentation of VR as the actual visual experience is very smooth. While we are flying around, I do want to address two common questions I've recently seen posted on my previous VR videos. Number one, is an NVIDIA 2080 Ti video card still relevant for VR in DCS World, or should I upgrade to a 3080 or 3090 video card? Number two, what are the frame rates like? To address the first question, the short answer is yes. In my opinion, the 2080 Ti is still relevant for the G2 in DCS World, allowing a great balance in frame rate and high visual quality. I don't have a 3080 or 3090 video card, but there are plenty of benchmark videos out there that can answer that part of the question. The longer answer is, it would come down to your expectations on frame rates. Some folks want a hard minimum of say 60 frames per second at highest settings, while others may settle for less. Ultimately, what is underneath your PC's hood, not just the video card, will decide what kind of frame rate you can obtain in DCS at any given graphics settings. The frame rate question is a common concern and understandably so. Many 2D monitor gamers are accustomed to frame rates exceeding 100, perhaps even pushing close to 200. Current VR gaming will see 45 to 90 frames per second, which may come as an initial shock. By now you have seen the frame rates in the upper left hand corner in Steam's FPS VR window. In DCS World, your altitude, whether up high or down low, plays a large role in your overall frame rate. With my current settings, down low at higher speeds, and looking side to side, there may be some ghosting and or micro stuttering on certain maps. That can be cured by turning on SteamVR's motion smoothing, which is available as a toggle switch during your sim play. However, enabling motion smoothing will cut your frames in half to 45 frames per second when the headset is unable to maintain the targeted 90 Hz in Windows Mixed Reality. Or you will be capped to 30 frames per second if you set the target frame rate to 60 frames per second. Additional examples in DCS that will result in varied frame rates are as follows. The choice of map. Are we landing on the supercarrier with a busy flight deck? Are you on a busy multiplayer server with up to 50 players and hundreds of static and dynamic objects? Or are we just out for a leisurely flight over Las Vegas enjoying the sunset? What defines an acceptable frame rate experience will come down to the end user, you. Your mileage will vary. Overall, I am very happy with the G2 VR experience in DCS World. Not only are the G2 visuals an improvement from the original reverb, the upgrades to the headset's exterior are massive. Those include a mechanical IPD, improved head tracking, new controllers with better ergonomics, a longer and thinner cable at 6 meters or just over 19 feet, new valve designed lenses for increased clarity, a more comfortable fit on your head and face, and off-ear headphones. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful if you are considering the HP G2 VR headset, notably for DCS World and or any other flight simulation title. Leave your comments and or questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.